Greetings, I'm Parent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to be doing a playthrough of Batman the Animated Series by IDW Games. This is going to be pretty awesome. We're going to be playing with four different characters. In my unboxing I asked for who people might want to see out on the board and I got some pretty cool suggestions so we're going to use some of the ones people asked for and of course there are some ones that I might want to try just on my own because they're pretty awesome. We're going to be playing a scenario out of the Arkham Asylum book itself. Each of these different groups have their own episode guide and you're going to be playing against certain enemies inside that episode kind of like you're watching one of the shows shows. But at the very back of each of the books, there is a set of scenarios that are called arcade scenarios, which you can play against whatever type of villains you would like to. And on top of that, there's one that's called the early release program, but it has three acts. We're going to play just this one shot one way back here called Bridge to Blimp Rescue. I'm excited to do this one. This one I think is going to be pretty cool. We're going to be attempting to defuse a bomb while also taking on two different villains and a lot of their henchmen. So let's dig into this and see what's going to happen. And if you're excited to see what happens in Batman the Animated Series, the board game, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. It says right here, the baddies are planning to blow up the bridge. Stop their sinister scheme soon before this serious situation is set off. The cool thing about this game is it can be played competitively. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be playing the cooperative version, mainly because I'm by myself. So we're going to be playing with just cooperative news here. And we have their heroes. It says the heroes win if they rescue all the bystanders, remove the objective tokens, and defuse the time bomb. The villains will win if the villains, uh, well, the villains win if the time bomb explodes or the heroes receive two KO tokens. We don't want any of that to happen. Then, of course, there's some competitive rules. We're going to skip those and move right to the cooperative rules. The hero players together decide which villain leader to battle against. I have decided which ones we're going to be playing against. We are going to be playing against Scarecrow because he's my one of my favorite villains. And we're also going to be playing against Livewire because she's one of the ones that is in some of the expansion and stretch goals material. And I wanted to play with like a base game character and a non-base game character. And as you've noticed, yes, none of them are painted up yet. I haven't had a chance to do it because I've been working on other things. So, and so, But I really want to get this playthrough out. So sadly, we're going to sing a lot of gray out there. I hope you can bear with it. I hope I can bear with it. That'll be the big trick right there. <laughs> Our scenario rules here say each objective tokens represent explosive tar charges. The heroes must use their investigate a special action on each explosive charge to remove it. The time bomb may not be defused or investigated until all the objective tokens have been removed. And you'll see those in just a second. Place five tick tokens on the time bomb sheet. At the end of each round, remove a tick token. If the time bomb has no tick tokens on it, then it goes tick, 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 boom! Just like Will Smith. We'll move on to our rules reference. There are some special actions we can do, and that is one, defusing a bomb. Take a special action while adjacent to a time bomb. Select a wire token on the time bomb sheet and flip it to reveal success or failure. If the flipped wire is a success, the time bomb is defused. If the flipped wire is a fail, remove one tick token, which makes it, <laughs> which means we lose more time, which we're faster to explode. We also can take a special action investigating a bomb. Take a special action while adjacent to the time bomb. Select a wire token on the time bomb sheet. Look at it, then put it back face down. As you can see, that's not going to advance our time. So it might be good to investigate a few of them before we actually start defusing, giving ourselves a better chance of actually figuring out how to defuse that bomb without blowing ourselves up. Here's our setup for the board, plus we have our bomb down here. These tokens over here represent where heroes will be starting. These right here will represent where the leaders start. And we get to choose the two leaders, and we've done Scarecrow and we've done Livewire. I'm going to start Livewire right here, because after all, Scarecrow is the one probably trying to blow up this bridge, and Livewire is just going to kind of shoot up into the electricity and get out of there as it blows up. So that's my plan here. Sadly, they've got a bunch of these hired goons here. These... <laughs> are probably not going to make it off the bridge before it blows up. We have enforcers and we have hired guns along with one of these, what is it, crushers. We got a crusher right here. On the blimp itself, we do have another crusher, some hired guns, and then we'll be placing Scarecrow right here. And our bomb is back there. We have to get to it. Now, I don't think these guys are going to be able to get off of this thing, and we have to try to get onto this thing. So it'll be really interesting to see how this is all going to play out. Of course, we do only have five tick tokens on this, so we only have five rounds to get out of here. This is all the rest of the things we're going to need in order to start playing. But first, let's check out the heroes, and then we'll look at our board. 
Our first hero is going to be Robin the Boy Wonder, who is a member of the Bat Family and has a utility belt. He starts with four movement, one pow. So when he goes to roll his attacking dice, he will use one attacking dice. That works for both melee and for range. On top of that, you'll be adding more based on the symbols you have on your dice. So if I make a range attack using that die as well, I would get a total of three dice to attack with, one for my actual stat and then two for the two different symbols on this die. You'll see how that all works during the playthrough. Three defense three ability cards, three focus, and it starts with 12 health. I'm allowed to pick up three cards. Now I can change out one card for four utilities as long as I have a utility belt, or gadgets I should say, for the utility belt. And that's what we're gonna do. The cards I've chosen to keep for ourselves is boot to the head. Robin leaps up to three spaces in a straight line and may then make a melee strike plus one battle die for each extra non-defend icon, icon spent. We're going to have that card, and we're going to have this one as well, Circus Up Ringing. When defending, Robin counts double hits as blocks. These dice have a block symbol like this, but they also have hit symbols, and then they have this double hit symbol, and that will equal a block for him because he's a super circus acrobatic extravaganza person. We have our throwing blade. These are going to be all our gadgets. Your next range strike gets plus one battle dice and does not weaken for the first four spaces. Now, once you use these gadgets, they are gone. We have these search goggles. Perform a special action without spending any action dice. If the special action is to investigate a bomb, you may inspect one additional wire, so that'll help us hopefully defuse that bomb. Then we have a grapple gun. Ignore any t figures and non-blocking terrain for your next move action this turn, though you cannot end the action in the space with another figure. If you move through any friendly figures, you may place one of them adjacent to you after your move action ends, which would be pretty cool. So I can grab people and move them around. Then I got a gas mask. I picked this up mainly because we're fighting Sandman, and guess what? He probably has some gas tokens. Until the end of the next turn, your hero gains immunity trait. Immune. Immune figures can't gain status tokens from poisons or gases, so hopefully we can not have to worry about his fear toxin. That's going to be the plan. Now, of course, that's Robin. We do have to use three characters, unless, of course, we decide to play the Dark Knight, which means I would only use Batman, and I don't want to do that. We're going to use four characters. That's our first one. Robin, let's check out the next one. What kind of person would I be if I didn't use Batman in his own game? So we're going to be using Batman. And we do have to talk about the Boy Wonder, though. Before we do, I forgot to tell you about his power. At the start of the round, after rolling action dice, Robin may add one additional non-defend icon to of the same type to one action die, not dice shared to him. If this die is shared with another hero, that hero also receives bonus dice. What does that mean? That's a great question. Every character is going to get three dice. And when you roll them up, you're going to be able to place them out onto your board, and then those are going to be shared with people on your right and left, which is why I have open slots on each of our player boards. When Robin does his, let's say he rolls a punch, and he decides to put it on this far side. He would be sharing it with Batman, and he could give himself another punch token, which then he would not only get on his character, but it, Batman as well would get that extra punch so he'd have two punches there as well so it's a really neat power and it gives a bat robin a lot of flexibility now let's talk about batman batman has two powers one of them's good one of them's kind of bad but he has an absolutely amazing stat line here he's got three speed two pow three defense four cards he gets four ability cards four focus and he starts with 13 health which is one better than robin and it says here prepared before rolling your action die batman may set one die to a non-bat side of his choice then roll the remaining dice as normal. The die that has been set must become the center die for the round. So if you have a particular plan you have to do, you can set one of your dice to whatever. So say you know he's going to get attacked, you could set one to defend. If you know he wants to punch something really bad, you could set one to double punch. It's really neat. Now, of course, you can't set it to the bat symbol, which is a way of healing. And also, it's kind of like a wild in a way, because after you roll it, you get to choose which side you want. But on top of that, you get to regain health and focus. It's a really good roll. But you can't set it to that. So that's his prepared side. Now, he does have escalation. Down here, it says in the cooperative, the first Arkham Villain initiative card card for the round receives a second turn at the end of the round. Our villains and our heroes are all going to be put together in an actual pool of cards and we're going to draw randomly which ones are going to go when. So for example, if we draw the enforcer card at the very beginning of the round and it's the first one, that enforcer would go again at the end of the round because he's really super excited to take on Batman. I don't know why you would be because Batman would probably take you out. Now Batman does get four cards, but I've choose to grab three and then we're going to use, discard one of those to be able to grab four utility but things for his belt. We're going to grab four gadgets. The first one I've decided to take is Shielding Cape. 
It says when this card is active, Batman receives defend plus three. However, if he leaves his current space, this effect ends immediately. And we have to play these two icons in order to have it happen. So I gotta use a focus and I have to spend one of my movement dice in order to be able to activate that shielded cape. We also have I Am the Knight. When played, move all enemy figures within two spaces of Batman one space. While this card is active, enemies cannot enter a space adjacent to Batman, so that should help keep him alive. And that's going to cost me two focus. Now I have four, so if you notice, I'm already going to have to pay three just to play these cards. Whenever you play a card in this game, you can only play one per turn, so you can't play multiple. Then I have Driven by the Past. Roll three battle dice. Batman regains life equal to the number of hits you roll, and then regains all of his focus, then remove this card from the game. It's kind of like a special healing card I can use. It has this X up here, meaning we'll be removing it from the game. He also gets four different utilities, or gadgets, I should say. Most of these are gonna be similar to Robin's. I'm gonna grab search goggles, a grapple gun, or two grapple guns, and a gas mask, just so I can maybe get around this board faster. If you saw how big that map is, I gotta get all the way to that bomb as fast as I can. So I think a couple grapple guns will help me get there. Our third character we're playing is Zantana. Super excited to play this character. Zantana is pretty awesome. She's got three movement, one pow, three defense. She can have three abilities, four of her focus. Now she only has eight health, so she's kind of a, she has a little bit less health than Batman and Robin and some of the least amount of health in the game, which is kind of sad, but we're gonna give it a shot. I'm pretty excited for this. She does have a ability here called, <laughs> I love the way they do this. It says Gabfo Scrict, which of course, if goes backward, it is Bag of tricks. During her turn, Zantana may choose up to two spaces that are within three spaces of herself and in her line of sight. Place a smoke token on each of those spaces at the start of her next turn. Remove the smoke tokens, which is kind of cool. She can put smoke tokens down. I do get to gain three ability cards. Now, she does not have a utility belt, so she cannot gain any gadgets. I have chosen these cards right here. The first one is the grand finale. Zantana regains all of her focus and may play more than one skill card this turn. Then remove this card from the game. It has that X symbol, so she only do this once. She has this one, which is the old switcheroo, which is pretty awesome. Choose a figure within two spaces of Zantana and in her line of sight. Zantana swaps places with that figure. This skill can be used more than once, paying the cost each time, which again is pretty awesome. So I could switch rue all over the place. I do have mirrors of smoke and mirrors. While this card is active, each time Zantana suffers a wound from an attack, roll one battle die per wound suffered. Reduce the wounds by one for each block or double hit you roll. So you get kind of an extra defense card. I figured that'd be good with her because she only has that eight health, so hopefully that'll help her out. Our last hero is Kara Danvers. We are gonna play with Supergirl. Ooh, pretty excited about this one. She's got an absolutely massive stat line as well. Four speed, three power, four defense. She only gets two cards and two focus, but she does have the most health at 15, which makes sense. She has a power here called Powerhouse. Supergirl may make a special action to swap one of her skill cards not currently active in the battle. In addition, if Supergirl has no focus when attacking, she considers her double hit cards are rolled on these dice as mid blanks, which is pretty bad. So I want to make sure she always has some kind of focus. Now she does come with an absolutely monstrous amount of cards here because you can switch these out. I think this is a really cool character. I love this concept. We're going to start with Heat Vision. It says Supergirl's next range strike doesn't weaken the first four spaces, and if she rolls at least two double hits, the defending figure is burned. And we're going to take flight as well. Supergirl receives move plus one and gains the flying trait. Pay one focus. If Supergirl moves through a friendly figure, she may place one of them adjacent to her after the move action. Very similar to those grapple guns. We're going to keep those as her first two powers, and of course I can do a special action to swap them out. A special action is using any one of the dice symbols that doesn't have a defend on it. As long as it doesn't have a defend on it, you can use it as a special action. So I could use this, for example, as a special action to swap one of her skill cards if I wanted to. It's pretty cool. So she has. An, it's not going to be too tough to switch out these cards because, well, actually, she's got a, such a monstrous amount of stuff she could do it normally. That's kind of cool. She keeps switching these out to make sure that she keeps doing what she can do.
Here we have our board all set up. These are those explosive charges that I have to get rid of before I can even do anything with this bomb over here. So we'll have to try to get our characters out there. I've put our characters over here. This is Zantana. She's got the smoke coming out. We have Supergirl right next to her. They then have Batman next to her. And then on that other side, we have Robin. We have to get to, these are all the enforcers. We have a crusher right here. We have some hired guns up here. Live wires right here. She's gonna be placed down as our first leader we have scarecrow here as our second leader then we have two more hired guns and another crusher so we'll see how that goes now up here we have our bombs we have to go set that up now and we also have all of our character cards for the enemies down here that we'll look at as we go into each one of their turns respectively here is our bomb and our round tracker right here. These are the things we have to put down on our bomb to see which one. One of these is the green one and all the rest are these red X's. We don't want to find any of the red X's. So we're going to give these all a good old truffle shuffle here and place them down onto the board. And we'll be removing these as we decide which ones we're going to cut and which ones we're going to keep. Now, sadly, of course, it'd be nice to use those goggles because I can see what these are. I can do special actions to see which ones these are as well. And here are our tick tokens. Normally, you use a round tracker marker if you want to. But what we're going to do is at the end of each round, I'm just going to take one of the tick trackers and just put it down on here to show what round we're on. And of course, if we run out of these, then we have become boom, boom, dead. Let's go ahead and start our game. The first thing we're gonna do is our phase one setup. Heroes are gonna roll their action dice. Heroes are gonna arrange action dice, shuffle the initiative deck, and proceed to the battle phase. We're gonna roll everybody's action dice all at once. That way it goes a little bit faster. At this point, everybody rolls them and then we're gonna go put them out with our hero boards and place them and figure out what symbols every person is gonna be able to gain from these dice. Just to show you, we have all our characters set up kind of in a circle. So we're gonna be sharing dice. These two are gonna share dice. These two are gonna share dice, share dice, and share dice. So it's gonna kind of go in a big circle here. At the beginning, I could have chosen which, uh, a die to put to a certain symbol for Batman, but I didn't wanna do that because I really don't have a plan. Not to mention when you do roll these dice, you can choose to play a focus to re-roll the dice if you want to. But again, I didn't do it because I just, <laughs> I don't really have a plan yet. So we'll see how this all goes. We'll start with, I think we'll start with placing out some of these dice. We'll see what we can do. We have a ranged attack. I think I might give this one here so that I can share it with Supergirl. And then I've got some movement symbols. I can share one of the movement symbols with Batman. Batman, I think we'll spend one of the movement symbols over here. We're gonna give some range attack to Robin and we're going to use a punch and a block for him up there. I know it's a little off screen. Zantana's a little bit interesting. We'll get back to her in a second. She's got double punch and double move. Wow, she's got lots of move and lots of punch. That's awesome. We have to figure out what we wanna do with this symbol. The way that bat symbol works is I can remove a wound for each hit rolled. I can also regain a focus or, and then afterwards I turn the action die to any other side of my choice and she's got a lot of really cool things she's got defense she's got, well, actually the dice are listed right down here on the bottom of her card and she also has that special power where she could even trade out some cards if she wanted to based on some of these dice i could give up i think she's going to gain a range attack as well she does have double move i think she's going to keep the double move she's going to give i think the ranged attack over to Batman, and she's going to give the punch to Zantana. I think I've got a plan. I think I'm going to switch these two around. I'm going to have him keep the boot, and I'm going to give the ranged attack with the block symbol over to Zantana. Zantana has a ranged attack. She's going to give that. She could either give it to Batman or to Supergirl, and she only, ha I think I'm going to give two ranged attacks, and then I'm going to switch this one to, I think we're going to switch it to a move and block. Oh no, I think I'm going to switch it to punch. We're going to give it a punch. That way I can give this punch to Supergirl. I'm going to give a range attack to Batman and she's going to keep a range attack. Now the way you keep track of what you've given to every person is with these cool tokens. You can place these down. Now I know I'm panned out quite a bit, but I wanted to show you the first round exactly how this works. But each round going forward, I'll be a little bit more zoomed in so you can see exactly how all these are working. We have this double range attack. I'm going to put that there. We also have a range attack here. She's going to give double range attack there. He's got a double range attack up here. So he's giving, wow, Bad Robin's got a ton of range attack. He's got to start shooting people. And then we have just the single range attacks on the other side. We're going to give one of the single range attacks to Batman and we're going to gain some boot symbols. The boot symbol from Robin right here is going to go up to Batman. We have a double punch and a punch. We're going to give those to people. So the double punch is gonna go up to Zantana and the single punch is gonna to go to Supergirl. The final one we have is this punch and block. 
we're going to give that punch and block to Zantana from Batman here. We'll put it right up there. So now we have all our characters with all the different things. There's one thing left to do. At the start of the round, after rolling action dice, Robin may add one additional non-defend icon of the same type of to one action. So I think we're going to give another ranged attack here. I think we're going to give this range attack on here, this die here. So it's going to be like a three. And that also shares over to Bat or to Supergirl. So Supergirl's got an absolute ton of range attack. I think we're doing pretty good. That's going to be our action or set our dice phase. Now we're going to move into our actual battle phase. During the battle phase, we are going to draw the top initiative card, activate figures, repeat step one to two until all the initiative is exhausted, and then we're going to proceed to the cleanup phase. Now remember, with Batman on the board, if the first villain we draw, we're going to be activating right before we go to the fourth step on this battle phase. We have our initiative deck right here. We're going to give it a good old truffle shuffle here so we get it nice and mixed up so we don't know who's going to go. I do want you to be aware that they do have a nice little spot down here where you can stick the deck, but due to recording purposes, my <laughs> table's kind of in places I've got things everywhere. So we want to try to keep everything nice and condensed. So we're going to take our first card, flip it over. It's going to be Scarecrow. Scarecrow is going to act first. Here is Scarecrow's card. He is the Arkham Asylum leader. He is immune, of course, to gases <laughs> because that makes sense. He's the Scarecrow. He has three movement, three attack, three defense, and 15 health in order to knock him out. He is going to melee attack the person with the lowest health. That is going to be his target of choice. He does have the Master of Fear at the start and end of his turn. All adjacent enemy figures, including bystanders, receive a Fear Toxin token. Scarecrow may make melee strikes against figures up to two spaces away. Melee, not melee. However, melee strikes cannot be made through enemy figures, so you still have to kind of have that line of sight type thing. The enemy figures consider Scarecrow to be a obstructing terrain when making ranged strikes against him and also if they are affected by his fear toxin. He's going to start by trying to get us able to get to this person, which is going to be the person with the lowest amount of health. Let's talk a little bit about what you see on the board. Scarecrow is right here. He does have three movement. A villain has two actions unless it's a leader. Then it has three actions. And one of the only can take one move action. So he's only able to move three spaces. One, two, three. What? <laughs> Let's talk about the terrain. This right here, all this purple, this is basically a bottomless pit. A bottomless terrain. So it's high above the city. I'm up on this top of this building trying to get to this balloon before it flies off and blows up. So this character is not going to voluntarily walk into a bottomless pit, so it's going to remain where it is. So basically the Scarecrow is just going to stay where he is. It's kind of a neat, it, it really is a cool thematic board. It's just interesting how this is all going to play out. He's not going to really activate at all. Also, when you go to activate enemies, you, when a villain initiative card is drawn, all figures of that villain type are activated. Figures do not activate if there are not targets in their shared line of sight then all our characters are behind uh, elevated terrain. That's right here. I'll show you a better picture of it when we get to their turn. So he can't actually even see anybody, so he's not even going to activate, which is kind of interesting. But also noted that none of these guys are really going to leave this blimp. They're hanging on the blimp, man. They're just going to hang out there and make sure his bomb blows up. The Scarecrow completed his turn. I'm actually going to move his card up to remind myself that that has to activate at the end of all these rounds. Our next person to activate is going to be the Crusher. The Crusher also doesn't have line of sight to anybody, but let's check it out. Here's the Crusher's card. He has 3 speed, 4 attack, 3 defense, and 8 health. He's a huge henchman. Enemy figures treat each character as two figures when breaking away or rolling for awakening. If Crusher's melee strike deals at least two wounds, the defending figure receives a stun token. This guy's bad news city, I tell you. He's also going to go after the person with the highest health, and he's going to try to do a melee attack. Here's a panned out view of the board yet again. Our Crusher is here. We also have one over here on the blimp, but the blimp guys are not going to move. He doesn't have line of sight through this. This is elevated terrain. These hired guns are all standing on a piece of elevated terrain, so my guys are all hiding behind it. So he doesn't have any line of sight, so he will not activate. We are going to go ahead and draw our next card and see who goes next. It's going to be Batman. Batman is going to activate next. Let's see what he can do. 
For this turn, Batman is going to use his grapple gun. Ignore any figure and non-blocking terrain for your next move action this turn, though you cannot end the action in a space with another figure. If you move through any figure, friendly figures, you may place one of them adjacent to you after your move action. He and Robin here are going to become best friends. I'm going to spend both of my movement icons, so I'm going to use my die and my actual token here to give myself a total of six movement which is going to allow me to move pretty far. So we're gonna move one, two, three, four, five, six to right here, and I'm gonna drop Robin right there. He's getting up into the fray. And at this point, let's see what we can do to some of these hired goons here. Batman having spent his movement icons are pushed up. We do have one punch icon we can use, so we're gonna use that to see if we can hit one of the hired goons. Then we're gonna use our ranged attack to try to take out one that is farther away. Batman has a POW stat of two, and he's using one icon on his dice, so he gets to roll up three attack dice. This enforcer has two defense. We're going to roll these up and see how we do. I got absolutely terrible roll. That's three total misses because those would actually be blocked. So we did not hit the enforcer with that attack. We're now going to take a range attack against one that is one square away from us. You cannot attack range character. You cannot attack a character with a ranged attack. Wow, I barely got that out to an adjacent character. I do have a total of three icons I can use on my dice and tokens, and I have a POW stat of two, so I'm gonna be able to roll five dice against an enforcer that is one square away. You can only target up to two squares away. Anything past that, you're gonna start taking a penalty towards your actual roll. And this one's only one square away, so let's see how it goes. I need a lot of hits here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six hits on this guy, and he's got two defense here. So he's going to block two of it, meaning I have done four damage to this enforcer and he's got five health. Oh, that's really tough. I could probably take this guy out if I spend one of my focus. Batman starts with four focus. I'm going to spend one of them. We all have these focus tokens. I actually didn't show you when I placed them out on our characters, but Batman does start with four. So he's down to three and he's allowed to reroll any amount of dice he wants. So I could even roll these single hits if I want to, but I'm not going to. We're just going to reroll this miss here and we got that hit we needed. Now I'm going to take out two for our defense and look we've done five so we were able to take that enforcer off the board so batman failed to hit this one but used his ranged attack to take out that enforcer right there let's see who's going to activate next now that batman is done i also want to mention that any gadgets you use are discarded for the rest of this scenario but you can gain them back when you move into other scenarios because you can re-equip all your characters the next character that's going to activate is going to be supergirl let's see what she can do Supergirl has this continuous power flight going on, so we're going to use this. It says, receive plus one move and gain the flight trait. I can pay one focus. If Supergirl moves through a friendly figure, she may place one of them adjacent to her after the move action ends. We're going to have this activate, and I'm going to use this double move to move a total of eight spaces. Supergirl's going to move one, two, three, four. You can move diagonal in this game. Five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to move to right here. I'm going to place Zantana right down there. And look at this. We're right in the midst of all these enforcers. I think we can take them out. We're going to start by using our three punches on one of the enforcers that are adjacent to us. Then we're going to spend one, two, three, four, five ranged attack on the one that is two squares away from us. I could use my heat vision by paying the two and attacking for three. And it says, but you can only play one action card a turn. But this one's always active, so it's not one I'm actually playing. So I could still play this. And it says Supergirl's next range strike doesn't weaken after for the first four spaces and if she rolls at least two double hits, the defending figure is burned. We could do that, but I think we're going to save that. Instead, I'm just going to shoot it for one, two, three, four, five actual icons on my dice, plus, of course, the POW. Just to show you what I'm doing, I'll be punching this one, and then we're going to make a ranged attack against that one. I get to roll a total of six dice, three for her POW stat, and then three for the icons that I'm using. I also have to pay one of my focus in order to be able to carry Zantana when I did the flight power. Let's roll these up and see how we do. We got a total of one, two, three, four, and he's going to block two of them. That is an absolute terrible roll. I do have my other focus token I could use, but she does have a power here that says, in addition, if Supergirl has no focus when attacking, she considers double hit icons as blanks. So I don't really know. I think we're just going to do the two damage, even though this roll is terrible. But hey, two damage is okay, and hopefully Zantana can go before these enforcers. He's going to take two damage. He's going to be at three. So I'll place that right up here. We're now going to attack the enforcer that's two squares away, and I'm going to get four, five, six, seven, eight dice. Wow, that's a monstrous amount of dice. 
and it is confirmed that if you ever run out of dice and you have dice you can still roll, you can actually keep rolling. They're, these are not limited to the amount that you have. So let's roll these up and see how we do against this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's perfect. These two blocks are fine because they don't matter. Uh, he's going to take out two. We've done one, two, three, four, five. We were able to take out that enforcer from the board. So we got the ranged attack one, but we only did two damage to the one that is melee. Now that Kara has completed her turn, we'll see who goes next. It's going to be Livewire is going to go next. Uh-oh. Let's see what she does. Here's Livewire. She's super cool. She's got four speed. Now notice her attack is a star. You'll find out how that works in a second. She's got three defense and 15 health. She's got this power called Charged Up, which is really neat. Place five charge tokens, which I've done right here on Livewire's character sheet. Charge side up, which is this side. The other side is not charged because it's, I guess, not colored. <laughs> I guess that's the only reason I'd think that's the charge size. Livewire's hit attribute is based on the number of charge tokens on her sheet. Each time she suffers a wound, flip a charge token to the discharge side. Once all of Livewire's charge tokens are discharged, she spends her entire next turn to flip them all back to their charge size. So we have to start hitting her. She does have three range and she's going to attack the person with the lowest health. Zantana is the person with the lowest health. Sadly, I really was hoping she would go before any of these real bad guys would attack, especially Livewire here. Livewire does have four speed, and she wants to be at range three of the lowest remaining health person. So she is going to move one, two to here, and then be one, two, three range away to be able to attack Zantana. Sadly, Zantana hasn't had a chance to go yet, so she doesn't have any of her cards activated. I would love to have her card smoke and mirrors out on the board ready to go so she could actually soak up some of this damage but she hasn't had a chance to play anything yet so let's see how this goes i'm going to get attacked for five damage she's going to have to defend it if we look at zantana's player board she has three defense and she has the extra defense from batman at least that should help her so i get to roll four dice hopefully i can block some of this we'll roll up our dice we're looking for blocks of course i only got one that's sad so i'm going to take three or four damage from this attack wow that's a that's like half her health or i could use a focus token to re-roll some of this and we have a ton of focus with her so i am going to spend one of her focus to re-roll these and see, hopefully get some more defense this was a defense i am not going to not take that from myself so i was able to block two so i'm only going to take three damage now that's i guess half the battle now remember these leaders get two or three actions she moved she attacked she's going to attack again i'm going to use my four defense also i want to let you know that once you do take damage i could go to a defensive mode meaning i could flip my dice all to defense and hang out there or i could keep exactly what i've got i'm going to stay with what i've got i've got kind of a plan i don't think it's that great i think i've totally put zantan in a bad spot we'll see how this goes we're going to roll up our four defense dice again and hopefully be able to block some of this we were able to block three of them that's fantastic so i'm only going to take two more damage from livewire bringing my damage total to five of eight with live wire done actually she did really good we'll go to our next person oh no it's our enforcers okay it might be time for zantan to actually probably have to go to defensive mode here's the enforcer he has three speed two damage two defense and five health we have a ready for action enforcers receive one action and activate when any other henchman initiative card is drawn he's gonna do a melee attack against the person with the lowest health so guess who that is yep zantana to figure out who's going to go after what, I want to direct you to this page right here. This is in the instruction booklet on page 31. This is a really cool laid out way of figuring out who's going to go. First, we choose which figure to activate. Is an enemy in optimal strike range with matching target priority? Yes, there is one. It is standing next to Zantana. So that one would be the first to activate. Then, all enemies within optimal strike range without a preferred target. We do have one. There's one next to... Batman, and there's one next to Supergirl. Last, all of the figures will activate. Then we check to see if any of these status effects are taking place. There are no status effect. Performing actions, attacking and moving, repeat until no actions remain. All ties in priority targeting are decided by the heroes. So that's kind of at least one of our advantages. Does the figure have remaining actions? Yes, our characters do, our enemies do. So we're not going to go to the end of activation. Is there a preferred target with an optimal strike range? Yes, there is one next to Zantana. So we're going to spend one action to attack the target. Is there another target within optimal strike range? Yes, there is. One next to Supergirl and Batman is standing next to another one. Of course, it's not the optimal strike range because the one they're going to try to target is the person with the lowest health and they can't get to it. So would climbing get the figure closer to the optimal target? No. 
has the figure moved yet? No, none of these figures have moved yet. So then is there a preferred target it can get to within optimal strike range of? No, the only one that's going to be able to do that is the one standing next to Zantana. Is there another target that can get within optimal strike range of? Yes, I can attempt to, I can move or be next to some of these other ones. And then lastly, well, then we're going to spend one action move toward the preferred target and shared line of sight. And then we're going to spend one action move towards them. So a lot of this is really cool. It tells you exactly how to activate each one of these enemies. Let's go to the board and follow this priority. Our first enemy we are going to activate is this one because it is in optimal strike range of its preferred target. Next, we'd activate this one and the one that is standing next to Batman because those two are next to somebody that's not the optimal strike range but is still in strike range of another character. And lastly, we have one that's actually farther away from our characters. This enforcer can move one, two, three to be able to attack Batman. I doesn't say anything about not being able to stand on these objective tokens, so we're going to be able to stand on them as far as I can, I'm concerned. So these two will be attacking Batman. We've got one attacking Zantana and one attacking Supergirl. We're going to look again at Zantana's board, and the way this works is you're going to use your defense to block the attack. So these are only going to do two damage, so I have to roll two blocks or things are going to get really bad. She has a total of three, four dice that she can roll, just like when she got attacked before. We'll roll up our four dice for Zantana and hope she blocks this Enforcer. We block two attacks from the Enforcer. Now the Enforcer has two actions it can do and it didn't have to move, so it gets to attack again. So we're going to roll our dice again and hopefully block these as well. We only blocked one this time, meaning we are going to take one damage unless I want to use a Focus Token. We're just going to take the damage. I think we're doing okay. We're at six of eight. That's actually not okay at all. But, you know, <laughs> it's better than nothing. And I want to save my focus tokens for when I actually have to attack and do stuff. At this point, we are going to have Supergirl get attacked. She has four defense as well. We'll roll these up. She doesn't have any defensive icons, just the four base from her card. She was able to block the first attack. And since this one is adjacent to her, it can attack again. And it got one. And that's okay. It hit her for one. That's too bad. We're going to put one damage on her character card. We have two attacking Batman. Batman has three innate from his card and he has one from his dice pool. So he's going to roll up four and see if he can block him. He blocked the first attack and the second one is going to attack. Let's see how that goes. It got him for one. We'll put one damage onto his character card. Now there is that one that moved for its first action and then it's going to make an attack. It only gets to attack once and I blocked it with the two right here. Our Enforcer has finished his turn, and we're getting slowly damaged. Zantana needs to roll a lot of bad symbols to be able to heal herself. <laughs> we'll see who's next. If the hired guns get to go next, we have a big problem. It's Robin. Robin is going to go next. Robin has an astronomical amount of ranged attack. We're going to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I think, plus his POW stat to attack one of the Enforcers that is adjacent to Batman. Let's make it this one right here. Robin gets to roll up seven dice. He gets six from the actual icons and he gets one from his character card. He got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That is enough. I'm going to remove two. That will get us our two, three, four, five health it takes to remove this enforcer from the map. At this point, I am going to spend my boot symbol to use my special action to remove this charge. Then we're going to spend my other move symbol to move one, two, three, four onto this one. I believe you can move onto these. We're then going to spend our last of our tokens we have. I've got a range attack token. I'm going to use that to remove this objective token as well. So we've gotten rid of two of the bomb detonation things, but we still have to deal with these two enforcers. I'm not too worried about this one. Batman can go one uh, mono -y mono on that guy without any problem. We have to take out these two or we're going to have big problems. There are only two cards left. This is either going to be super dead Zantana or Zantana gets to actually hopefully save herself. Let's see who goes. Come on, Zantana, let's go. Yes, Zantana gets to go. Woo -hoo. All right, she's going to actually be able to do some stuff. And we know that this is going to be the hired guns, which is going to activate the enforcers. So we have to try to take out those enforcers next to her or she's going to have a world of hurt. The one next to Zantana has taken two damage. So we're going to spend one, two, three, four. And she gets one here for five dice to try to do a punch against that one. I get to roll five dice against this enforcer. Let's see how this goes. I got it. Oh, wow. Look at that. One, two, three, four. That's going to be enough. I'm going to take out two of these because he was able to block two with his defense. Four is going to be enough to take that enforcer off the board. So he is gone, which is fantastic. Now, I do have a range attack I can make, but it's only going to be for three dice. And the one I'm attacking has yet to take any damage. We'll roll our three dice, see what happens. Probably not much. Oh, wow. Actually, it didn't do, do, do too bad. We did two damage to that one as well. So we're going to go place these two damage out on the board for that that guy. 
We'll place our two wound tokens here next to this person, and I'm going to play this card. I'm going to spend one of my focus tokens to play the old switcheroo. Choose a figure within two spaces of Xantana and in her line of sight. Xantana swaps spaces with that figure. This skill can be used more than once, paying its cost each time. I'm going to pay one to move back here. Then I'm going to pay, I think I'm going to pay another one to move back here. So we're going to pay two of our stamina points to do the old switcheroo twice, bringing Robin and Supergirl up a little bit, or sorry, uh, Robin up a little bit and moving this hired goon to here. I think that's going to be our best plan. You think I'd learn from all the other places I do, don't send the glass cannon up into the front. That was pretty bad maneuver. We do have our hired guns next. They're going to activate, which then are going to activate our enforcers as well. There is a row of machine guns here. This is our hired guns. They are not in optimal range. One, two, three, four. There is nobody within range four of these enemies. Being on elevated terrain, they don't suffer any type of range penalty when making attack. But if you shoot from down to up, you suffer a range penalty. These are not going to suffer any range penalty. They can't actually attack anybody, so they're going to probably climb down. Uh, climbing for these characters, for example, it says climb is not considered to be a move action and is only used the targeted hero is in line of sight and on different terrain level from the AI villain figure. And that is true. They are trying to per attack the person with the highest health, which is going to be Supergirl, who is over here. So this person is going to use a one of its actions to climb. Then it's going to try to get into optimal range, which would be a movement of one, one, two, three, four. It is now an optimal range of her. It has run out of actions, though it can't actually attack this turn, which is good. This one's going to move one and then go ahead and climb. Or actually can climb right here and then move one, two, I guess, over to here. This one is going to move one two and then climb down to there and this one's going to move one two and climb down to here because their optimal target is right there so they're all going to kind of bunch up over here i wish i had like a bomb attack or something that i could just put down right there and hit them all that would be absolutely fantastic but sadly that is not how it goes i also have to move these two health tokens over to where i did the old switcheroo now that the hired gun activated, our enforcers are ready for action. They're going to receive one action and activate when another henchman initiative card is drawn. So they have one action here to be able to do something. And their preferred target is, of course, the person with the lowest health. It, can, it is not able to do that. So instead, this one's going to attack Supergirl, and this one is going to attack Batman. Supergirl has four defense. Let's see how this goes. She's able to block one, so she will take one damage. She is at two damage right now. Batman gets to roll four dice as well. Let's see how he does. He is not good at blocking he has taken two health or i could use a focus token i think to re-roll these and hopefully maybe block something let's see how that goes i blocked one i threw the other one on the ground i blocked one i'll take one damage that's okay batman is also up to two damage wow these guys are whittling me down at the end of round, any status effects or things that we have would, or any abilities that talk about the end of round would activate now. There aren't any, so I'm just going to take a tick token and move it to the time tracker, meaning that we are slowly running out of time to save Gotham. At this point, we get to roll up all our action dice. I am going to set one of Batman's action dice to a double punch. That one has to go in the middle. I cannot share that die. Let's roll these up and see what we get. We hopefully get some pretty good things here. I really needed Xantana to get some of those bat symbols. I'm going to use a focus token to get some bat symbols for her. So we're going to slide these dice all over here so I hopefully don't mess them up. Look at this. Triple punch. Wow, that's out of control. Come on. Bat symbols. Yes, we got one bat symbol. That's better than nothing. I'll take it. Let's see if there's anything. If we Now, we can't re-roll these dice but maybe we might want to reroll some of these. We'll have to check to see if that's really what I want. I think we'll be okay with these dice. Let's place them down and see what we can do. This one's going to be super easy. I'm going to give him, I don't know, let's say three punches there. And I'm going to pass a punch token to Batman, and I'm also going to pass a punch token over to Supergirl as well. And because of his boy wonder ability, I get to add a symbol to one of these dice, and I'm going to add a punch symbol. And I think we'll add the punch symbol to Supergirl. Batman gets a double range attack and a defense, so he's going to give the defense to Robin, because Robin's probably going to go up in the fray, and I'll give that double range attack to Xantana. Hopefully she can do something with it. We'll see. The first thing we have to do is deal with this. I get to roll a damage die here, or one of these action dice, and see how much I heal. I heal equal to the number of hits, so we're able to heal one. I'm going to put two back out on her, so she has five damage, and she gains a focus token back. At this point, I have to set this die to another symbol. I think we're going to send it, set it to a maybe a boot and a move. That might not be that bad. Yeah, we'll set it to a boot and a move. Or sorry, a boot and a defense, which then we can give over to Batman as well, which I think will help him out quite a bit here. 
because he, he needs some defense and he needs some movement. Well, he's got defense. He needs to move. He doesn't have any way to move. So we're going to put that over there for him. Then I have another boot and a move, I guess, or a boot and a move. I keep saying boot and a move, boot and a defense. We're going to give a punch over here, I think is going to be our plan. Well, actually, I'm going to keep her with a punch, and I'm going to use that one over there so Supergirl can gain some defense as well because we are taking quite a bit of damage here, so we got to start dealing with that. She's going to take one of these tokens down here. That's going to be the end for Xantana. Let's see what I can do with Supergirl. Supergirl also has to deal with this bat symbol, so we'll roll up our die right here. She was able to heal one damage. We'll remove that. Then I have to switch this to a die of my choice. And we're going to place it on double punch. We're going to go for a super punching here. We're going to give lots of people punches, and then we're going to do this double move here for her. I think that's going to be my plan. I think everybody at least has one movement symbol. No, Robin has no way to move. I think we're going to give Robin a double move in case he needs to actually get somewhere. We'll give Xantana the double punch, though. That bat symbol is also going to give me back a focus token, which is going to be key. Supergirl should, I believe, have two focus tokens, not just the one you saw. And I forgot to activate Scarecrow at the end of the turn, but that's okay. He can't leave that blimp, so his activation is null and void anyway. We're going to grab these, give them a good old truffle shuffle here, and we're going to see who goes first. So this, you can really live and die by this initiative deck here. This is Bad News City. I really need our figures to go first. If those hired guns go first. We're in big trouble. I don't know if we're going to make it out of here. Let's see who goes first. It's going to be, oh no, Livewire is going to go first. She could probably kill somebody. Livewire's optimal target is going to be the person with the least amount of health. That's Xantana. We'll go through our orders here and see if we can figure out what she's going to do. Is there a preferred target within optimal strike range? No, there is not. She is not within strike range. Uh, is there another target within optimal strike range? Yes, there is. Supergirl is within optimal strike range. So I'm going to spend one action to attack that target. Supergirl only has four defense, so we're going to roll this up. She's going to take five minus whatever I can block, which is one. So she's going to take four damage, really? Okay, oh, that's something. So I'll put that on her card. She has taken a total of five damage as it is. She has ten left. I get to get attacked three times. Lucky me, huh? Let's see how this goes. I get to block one, two, three this time. So I'm only going to take two damage this time from the five attack. We really got to hit Livewire because she's doing a lot of damage to us. And I get to block one more attack from Livewire. Hopefully I get... I only got one, so I'm going to take four damage again from Livewire. Let's see what that brings me up to. Now, I could use a focus token, but I really need to save those focus tokens for what I'm planning to do. And sadly, that seems to be one of the downfalls of Supergirl. She can get hit quite a bit with and with only two focus tokens and having the detriment of when you have none, these become blanks is really tough. That's the end for Livewire. And I'm going to try this again. I'm going to slide it up and hopefully I remember that I can activate at the end of turn. It's going to be our crusher next. Let's see if they can get to me. If we go through our order of operations again for the Crusher, which is actually located right here, we're going to see, is there a preferred target with an optimal strike range? No, his preferred target is the person with the most health and try to do a melee attack. And actually, the most health is right here. Robin has more than anybody else right now. He is then, is there another target within optimal strike range? No, there is not because he is a melee figure. Would climbing get this target closer? No. Has this figure moved yet? No. So is the preferred target it can get within optimal strike range of? No. Is there another target that it can get within optimal strike range of? No. So I'm just going to spend one action to move toward the preferred target in a shared line of sight. So this, what it means by shared line of sight is all of these have the same type of line of sight. So if he was like back here and this one was in front or over to the side and it can't see the person you're supposed to over here, they all share that line of sight. So this one would still be able to activate against that. This person is going to move. It's going to move its speed, which is three, one, two, three, toward its preferred target or an, an, an optimal one. Is there another target it can get within optimal strike range? No. So it is going to move toward the preferred target. Oh, its preferred target is going to be Robin, but it can't because it can't move through things. So it's actually not going to move. The Crusher was nice enough to not actually get us. We have our Enforcers next. Oh, these are going to be bad news. They're going to be attacking pretty much who they're standing next to. Supergirl and Batman are both going to be attacked by these figures. I wonder if I should have turned Supergirl into super defense mode. Oh, it's too late now. She gets to roll four defense against the one that is attacking her. She blocked the first attack. Let's see how she does against the second attack. She blocked the second one. Batman has a total of one, two, three, four defense, five defense. He has five defense. Let's roll up our dice. He has to block. He blocked the first attack. And let's see how he does against the second attack. He blocked it as well. The enforcers did not do any damage to us. I would really like one of our characters to go now. Batman. All right, that helps. That's half the battle. Batman's going to go next. Batman has the ability, hopefully, to take the guy out that's next to him. So he's going to use all of his punching. So he's going to get a total of five dice to see if he can hit that enforcer. 
We need to get a really good roll here. Let's see how it goes. I got one, two, three, four, five, six. He's gonna block two. So I'm gonna use one of my focus tokens to be able to reroll this die and hopefully get a hit. That is exactly what I needed. I did a total of five damage. It does take that enforcer out in one hit. I'm then gonna spend my double ranged attack to remove this token. And then I'm gonna use my move one, two, three to move up to there. And that's all the dice that Batman has. The rest are all built for defense. Batman has gone, let's see who's next. It's gonna be, oh, it's gonna be the hired guns, really? <laughs> Bad guys all go and then we get to go. Oh no, let's see what the hired guns are going to do. Our hired guns are going to attack the person with the highest health within four range. That's their optimal target. They have a three speed, two attack, two block, and three health. They have an ability here called pin them down, which is absolutely terrible. If a hired gun makes two attack actions on the, the, their turn against a single enemy figure, that figure is now under fire. Hired guns may not put adjacent figures under fire. Place a firing token on the attacking figure and the matching under the fire token on the defending figure. The defending figure may not move toward the attacker and if they end their turn under fire, their life is instantly reduced to zero. I really don't know how we're gonna deal with this. This is gonna be bad news. From how I understand this, their optimal target is the person with the most health. That is gonna be Robin. One, two, three, four. They do not have range to a person within optimal, the optimal target, but does it have range to another character? Yes, that's gonna be Batman because Batman has the next highest health. One, two, three, and one, two, three, four. So I have totally moved him incorrectly and all of these guys get to double fire at Batman. He's gonna take an astronomical amount of damage. Batman has five defense, so he gets to at least roll five dice. He was able to block one. He will be taking one damage. At this point, Batman is already gone, so I'm going to spend, send him into defense mode. So I'm going to gain all of these defense icons on my dice. So I have a total of three, four, five, six, seven defense against all the rest of the attack. So we roll up our seven dice. This is, this is the second attack from our first person. We're able to block two. Now I have to deal with all the other attacks. So I'm going to roll up, what, two, four, six times here. One, I only got one, so I'm going to take one damage. One damage, then I were able to block that, so we've taken one so far. Then our next guy, we've blocked that, and then we're fourth attack, we blocked that one. Then we have two more shots coming at us. Let's see how this goes. I blocked one, and I'm hopefully going to block the other one. Yes, we only took one damage from all of that, but I am under fire from all of those guys. I have placed four under fire tokens under Batman here because he's under fire from all of those guys. Now, the problem is I have to try to break line of sight or I have to take out every one of these guys that are firing at me or I'm going to be dead next turn. I don't really know how we're going to do that. <laughs> this could be a pretty quick playthrough. Uh, this is a really tough scenario. I have yet to win this one. I thought if I played it a couple times and maybe tried my best against all this, I might actually make it. But wow, this is a really tough scenario. <laughs> I don't know how people get through. And of course, it's not over yet. We still have our enforcer that it gets to activate because of the hired gun. Supergirl does have four defense. Let's see how this goes. Oh, she blocked nothing. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. She'll be at 13 damage if I take it. I think we're going to take it because I've, <laughs> I need to keep her focus tokens. So we're going to take two more damage, bringing our total to 13 of 15. All right, good news. The only villain left in there is the leader, uh, Scarecrow, and he uh, <laughs> can't do anything because he's on the bubble or the balloon. Let's see who's next. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's the Scarecrow. All right, he's going to go over here. He's not going to activate because there's nobody within his line of sight that he can see because there's elevated train between them, and also he will not try to get off that blimp. Well, look at the bright side. These are all our guys. Let's see who's next. Antenna's next. Let's see what she can do with her dice. This I get back into my hand and I get to choose what to do. We're gonna use this to get rid of the objective token that is near her, then I'm gonna move, then I'm gonna punch something, and then I'm gonna use this to get rid of the objective token that I'll be next to after this. I'll show you how it all is gonna work. We're gonna start by using my boot and defense to move one, two, three up to here. I'm gonna use a boot and move, I'm gonna use my double range to remove this objective token from the board. At this point, I'm gonna spend my three punch to maybe take out this enforcer that is next to us. It only has two health. So I get to roll four dice. Let's see how this goes. I got a total of one, two, three, four, five. I get to remove two. I've done three damage. It already has two, so the enforcer is off the board. I still have one more movement symbol, so I think we're gonna move one, two to right there. Next turn, I can get rid of the subjective token. Of course, if there is a next turn, there's a lot of guns over here. And then of course, we got live wire as well as a ranged character. I really need Supergirl to go next. Let's see here, we got a 50-50 chance. Okay, good, something went right. <laughs> oh 
I'm going to move Supergirl next. What we are going to do is I'm again going to use my flight ability. Supergirl receives plus one move and gains the flight trait. I'm not going to spend my focus token because I thought I was going to be carrying Robin, but I'm not. I maybe should have used it to reroll some of these dice. Again, total fatal error on my part. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to use my double boot to do that move. Then we're going to start taking out some of these hired guns. I'm going to spend two punch to try to take out one of these. These hired guns have two defense. I get to roll one, two, three, four, five dice. Hopefully we can take out each of these hired guns. That was a horrible roll. I'm going to use my focus token to reroll these three. Hopefully that'll be enough. That's easily enough to take out the hired gun that is in front of me. I'm going to spend two more punch icons to be able to attack the one and and that is diagonal to me. Let's see how that goes. We're able to do one, two, three, four, five, four damage to it. That's not quite enough. It's able to block two, meaning I've only done two damage. I'm going to have to use my other two punch icons to attack it. It's taken two already. Let's see how much more. Oh, where were you in the last roll? So we took out two of the hired guns. That's not too bad. We've eliminated that one and this one. We are going to remove these two under fire tokens from them and we'll remove the two under fire tokens over here. I should say firing and under fire. There we go. Those two are gone. That's it. Supergirl, I think, is out of action. She's got one more movement. She could move, but if she moves down here, she's going to start getting shot at by those guys. I think she'll just move to right there, which is probably going to be the end of her, but that's okay. We know who's next. It's going to be Robin. Robin is right back here. He's going to use his movement icon that he got. He got a double boot from Supergirl. He's going to move one, two, three, four to right here. He's got a lot of punches. He's going to use th all three punches to... Oh, no, do I take out the hired gun or do I take out live wire? Live wire is going to activate again and try to attack somebody. And it's probably going to be Zantana and she's going to be dead. Oh, I got a plan. I'm going to move him there. Now that blocks his line. Or doesn't hear me. Characters don't block lines. Like, well, whatever. We're going to move her, him right here, I guess. We'll keep him right where he is. Totally fine. He's just going to use all of his punches to try to take him out. I get to roll four dice. Let's see how this goes. Come on, I need a big, big number here. We got, wow, that's not big at all. I'm going to re-roll these two dice. I need to get a lot better than that. We got, oh, we got exactly what we needed. So that's going to take out two of these, but three is enough to take out that hired gun. So this one is also removed. And lucky for us, that means Batman has one less person that is putting him under fire. We do have to take this person out before the end of Batman's next turn. Hopefully we can have one of these characters go first and take him out so that, that under fire doesn't take place. We do have to activate live wire last. This was Robin's card. I forgot to draw it. Let's see what she's going to do. We'll follow down our priority of activation. Her preferred target is a person with the least amount of health, which is going to be Supergirl. Is, does the figure have any remaining actions? Yes, it does. Is there a preferred target within optimal strike range? There is, but you cannot make ranged attacks when you're adjacent to a person. Is there another target within optimal range? Yes, there is. Batman and Zantana are both within optimal range. Would So then I'm going to spend one of my actions to attack the target. I'm going to target the closest enemy which will be Zantana, which will probably be the end of her. I get to roll five defense dice against this attack, but I do want to mention I have totally forgetting her power. Her power is amazing. I guess that's what I get for recording the intro at night and then doing the actual playthrough the next day. <laughs> I totally forgot about her power. Her power is really cool. I get to place down smoke tokens within two space. I'll choose two spaces within three spaces of her. What these smoke tokens do is I'm allowed. You can target up to smoke tokens, but you can't target through smoke tokens. So if I were to place these down, Zantana wouldn't even have been shot almost half these times because I could have been protecting her from any of these range attacks that are coming at her. Absolutely, totally forgot about her power. She is being attacked by live wire three times. Let's see if we can actually stop this at all. We were able to stop three. Three. So I'm going to be taking two damage unless I want to use a focus token. I think I will use a focus token to roll one of my dice or to reroll these dice. I need some more defense. I got more defense. So that's going to mean I take one damage. She's at six health right now. At this point, I'm going to go into defense mode. So all three of my dice have defense icons and I have the three right here. We're going to be attacked two more times. This is probably still going to be the end of her, but I'll give it a shot. I've got two defense there. I'm going to spend my focus token on this roll to see if we can stop any more of this from coming at us. We can't. We're going to take, a, what, three more damage, and that is going to be enough to knock her down. Sadly, Zantana was knocked down because Baron can't play the game right. He totally forgot about her smoke ability, which is actually even coming out of her hat. Come on, Baron, wake up and smell the coffee here. We're going to ha be able to try to get her back up, though, because there's a rule called awakening, and you'll see how that works, apparently, in the next turn here. That is the end of the second round, so we'll be moving a tick token over to the two.
Moving to our next round, we're going to roll up our action dice and see how it goes. We've got to try to save Zantana. This could be interesting. We're, we'll see if there's any of these I want to re-roll. I think we're pretty good. I could have set one of Batman's dice to one of my choosing, but I chose not to, mainly because I'm hoping for some of these bad symbols. We need to start healing our characters, and we need to get Zantana. Wow, this is going to be something else. Let's see how this goes. Batman got one of his symbols. We'll roll our damage or our die here and see how much we are able to heal. Absolutely nothing. We could use a focus, but I'm not going to. We're going to swing this over to a defense, and I think a defense and punch. We're going to put it right there. Then I'm going to give the range attack over here, and I'm going to keep the move for myself in the middle. That's going to give a double range attack to Robin, and we're going to give a defense and punch to our good friend Zantana. We've got three symbols here for Robin. They're not the greatest. Maybe I should have used one as focus tokens, but that's okay. We're going to use the double range. We're going to give that to Batman. I'm going to give the move to Supergirl, I think. Oh, no, I think we'll give the double range to Supergirl and give the move to Batman. Because he has to try to get out of there. And I'm going to, oh, no, better yet. Check this out. I'm going to try to move all these around because it's so much fun to just move every die all the time. That's how we're going to do it. That way we can give a defend to Supergirl because she's pretty close to dying. And I think we'll keep the double range for ourselves. Nope, let's give that to Batman. Why not? There you go. Perfect. So Batman's going to get the double range. I think I moved all the dice around as many times as I could have. And we're going to give this block token over to Supergirl. Supergirl is in a world of hurt, but we get to roll up one of our dice here and see how we do. We get to heal nothing, which is awesome. I do get a focus token back, and I forgot to give one to Batman. Batman should have gotten a focus token back as well. I get to switch this to whatever I want. I'm going to put this to defend and punch as well. Then we're going to give our double punch to my... So we'll give it to Robin. I don't know if he's going to be able to use it. And we'll use the double move over there. So Robin's going to grab a double punch token, and I'm going to give a punch and defense token to... Zantana. She's going to need that, I think. Zantana has these dice here. I'm not sure if this is right, but I'm going to do it anyway. I do get to roll this dice to potentially heal myself. I, you know, if you notice, I have eight health. I was actually at nine, but you can never go above the actual total health value ha you have, which is eight. She got this, so it doesn't matter. I'm not able to heal anyway. I do get a focus token. I'll place that right here. And then I'm going to flip this to a defense. We're going to put it to a defense and a move. I'm going to give that to, I think I'm going to give it to Supergirl. I'm going to give the other one to myself, and I'm going to give a bat attack to Batman. So Batman's going to grab a ranged attack, and I'm going to give this move and block token to Supergirl. The reason I've given a lot of this block to her is when we have to go try to awaken, I get to roll battle dice equal to the number of defense that I have. And that's going to help me heal these wounds. And if I can get to my uh, number here, my awakening num value, which is 8, she'll be able to stand back up and start attacking again. And this time I might actually remember to use my smoke. And all that depends on whether or not these cards want to be nice to me. We're going to give these a good old truffle shuffle and see what is going to, who's going to go when. I really need some of our heroes to go before some of these bad guys because that would be really nice for them. And we're going to, nope. <laughs> we're going to start with live wire. Oh, she's going to zap somebody else. Oh, I was so contemplating attacking her, but I thought I need to get rid of those hired guns so Batman doesn't get removed from the game, or at least KO'd. So, but instead, now I got live wire attacking three times for an astronomical amount of damage. Let's move down our performing action events chart. <laughs> Does the figure have remaining actions? Yes, she's got three actions. Is there a preferred target within optimal strike range? No, there is not. One, two, three, four. She only has three range, so she cannot attack her. She's down. It will not attack a down figure. And these two are adjacent to her, so she can't use a ranged attack. Next we have, is there another target within optimal strike range? No. Would climbing get the figure closer to an optimal target? No. Has the figure moved yet? No. So is there a preferred target it can get to get within optimal strike range of after moving? It's going to try to attack the person with the lowest health, which is going to be Supergirl. It could move right here. It's going to take one extra movement point to move away from each adjacent enemy to the person. So it's going to cost one, two, three movement to move there. She has a total of four. And Supergirl has absolutely not enough defense to be able to survive this. But she's going to get attacked by live wire from how I understand how this works. So she's used one of her actions to move, but she's going to use the other two to fire at Supergirl. Livewire is still attacking for five damage. I need to do something about that. We're going to roll up our defense. I get a lot of them at least. I get four for myself, and then I get three from the actual icons on my dice and little chips I've got. I was able to block two, which means I'm going to take three, which would knock her out. So we are going to use our focus token to reroll all of these to hopefully be able to survive this attack. 
we got four, so I am gonna only take one, which puts me at a total of 12, 13, 14. If I take one more damage, I am dead. We have to block five uh, shots here in order to stay alive. Let's see how this works. I was able to block two, that's not enough. I do have one more focus token I'm gonna spend. Now, of course, all my double hits become blanks now, but you know, that's okay. We'll roll these up and I've got, oh wow, look, I got five. I was able to block the entire thing when she attacked. Now, of course, because I'm super awesome and I'm great at drawing cards, she will get to activate at the end of this entire round. We'll slide Livewire's card up and we really have to take care of her because <laughs> she's going to go again. And we've got, oh, I threw my card over there. It's Supergirl. Supergirl gets to go next. She really is not going to be doing much, but we'll see what she can do. Supergirl does have three punch, so I think she's going to punch here. Then she's going to probably have to fly again. She can use her flight and she's got a lot of speed. She's going to use one of it to move. She's going to use one of her actions to use this one of her speed ones then she's got another double movement so she's going to use that movement to move one two three squares right to here she's able to do that because in flight i ignore breakaway from all these people not to mention i still have a ton of speed once i start moving and i can fly over these people which is kind of cool that's the end of her movement but before we moved i am going to use my three punch to try to punch this guy I get to roll six dice. We'll see how this goes. This is probably not going to go very well. I got a total of one, two, three, four. I don't have any focus. These two miss. He gets to block two. Oh, I did two damage. He's almost dead. Wow, unbelievable. So this guy's taking two. I need to hit him at least one more time. Now, Supergirl's done. We'll move on to our next person. We'll draw our next card. Hopefully it's somebody that, Scarecrow. He's not going to activate, which is fantastic. And then we're going to go to Robin. Oh, I think that might be perfect. Robin's going to use his ranged attack. He's got four. He's going to use that against that uh, hired gun. Then he's going to try to punch Livewire. We'll see how that goes. It could go absolutely tragically bad. I could use this boot to the head, but I'm not gonna be, I'd am not. i like to actually do two attacks this turn. If I use boot to the head, I could move this use that to use it and then i could spend these other icons to be able to roll more dice but i don't think it's gonna be enough to do the hired gun when i could really just hit it with these four plus one is five that's actually fantastic our other one of course is always on and i get to my double hits count as blocks but yet robin has not been attacked which is absolutely hilarious this hired gun is so toast let's see how we do here we got a total of two well i don't know why i spoke before i rolled the dice <laughs> We're going to use a focus token to re-roll these dice. I need to hit. Okay, I got two hits. He's going to block two. He's going to take two. Our hired gun is dead. Oh, I took a focus token to do one damage to a hired gun. So our hired gun is done, which means that none of the under fire is going to at, at any time affect Batman. So he's going to be safe from now on. Robin now is going to use double punch. And I have this move. I'm not actually going to use the movement. I'm going to stay right way in, but I am going to try to punch live wire with this. I only get to roll three dice while attacking, but these charge tokens are out of control. I need a good roll here. Oh, I only got two. So she was able to block three. So I wasn't able to do any damage. I could use a focus token and re-roll all of these, but then I'm out of focus tokens. I don't know. And you know, let's give it a shot. I'm going to use that focus token to re-roll this. Hopefully get a good roll in here. Oh, I did the same roll. <laughs> That's kind of sad. So I didn't do any damage to Livewire. And I just noticed that Supergirl is standing on one of those objective tokens, so I will use that move that I have on that die to be able to take care of that objective. Good news, almost all the minions are gone, which is good stuff. Well, except for the Crusher. <laughs> Let's see who the Crusher attacks. He's going to go after the person with the most health, which is actually going to be Robin. This Crusher has three speed. It's going to move one, two, just like that, and attack Robin with his four attack. I do get four defense. Let's see how this goes. I got a total of I got a total of four because of his awesome card. He's got that card that says Circus Upri Upbringing. When defending, Robin counts double hits as blocks. So I was able to block all four damage. That was a crusher. Did nothing. Good news. The only things left in this deck are my guys. We've got Zantana next. She's going to try to stand up. She's going to attempt to do an awakening roll. How this works is a hero that's knocked down on the next turn, which is now I get to roll a number of battle dice equal to my defend attribute, which is going to be three. So she'll be rolling three dice for her defend attribute. Then I get to add additional dice for each defend icon on my action dice. That is going to be a total of four. I've got four on my action dice. So we're up to seven dice. We also get to add one per adjacent friendly support hero. We don't have any support heroes. I also get to add plus two dice per adjacent non-knocked down hero. So we're going to be up to, well, I'm running out of dice, unless, but we're going to be up to even more. I'm just going to put down some tokens. There's our two dice. 
that for Supergirl, then I get two dice for Robin. So we're rolling a whole ton of dice here. I do have to remove three dice per adjacent non-knockdown villain. So I am going to be removing these three dice because Livewire is, of course, next to her, which is why I use the tokens because it was kind of good to get rid of them anyway. I also get to remove one die per adjacent villain minion. The only minion is here, and it's not adjacent to Zantana. Now, I'm going to roll all these dice, and if the hero removes wounds equal to their hit rolled on the battle dice and stands up, their life minus remaining wounds is equal to or greater than their awakening attribute. Her awakening attribute is 8, so I need to roll 8 or better on those dice. The odds may not be in my favor, but we'll see how this goes. I got a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We did it. We were able to heal eight wounds off her, so she has reached her ability to stand up. I will remove the eight damage from her, and I get to continue her actions as normal. I have one focus, and I can use any of the dice to do what I need to. From where I am, I am going to do a double punch to maybe do some damage to Livewire. We'll roll my three dice. It's probably a mute point. We'll see how this goes. Yep, I didn't actually hit her. Totally fine. I do have a range attack that I could go after this guy. The only way I can actually damage him is if I get two double hits, because I only have one ranged attack. But let's see how we do. We'll see what we can do about this. I got two hits. He's able to block three, so that didn't do any damage to our crusher. I do have some movement symbols, but I'm not going to use them. I do have to stand her up. Instead, I am going to be smart this time, and I'm going to be able to place down smoke tokens. I'm going to place a smoke token here and here, one on Livewire and one on Robin. The reason I'm doing that is you cannot target through smoke, but you can target into smoke. And I've got a plan. It's not probably very good, but I've got a plan. We're going to draw our next card and see who it is. It is our hired guns. They are all gone, except for the ones on the blimp, which aren't going to activate at this point. And let's see who our next character is. It's going to be Batman. Batman will now activate. Batman's going to spend most of his symbols to do some of these objective tokens. He's going to use his one movement icon that he has to move one two to right here. At this point, he's going to use his single ranged attack and his double ranged attack to remove both of these objective tokens. He does have a double ranged attack left if he wants to use it, but he's not within two, so it'd actually be at a negative penalty. So I'm not going to fire that either. I'm just going to probably move to our next turn. Oh, you do have to draw one more card, which I'm guessing is Scarecrow. And Lunch is going to be right here. And the Scarecrow is not going to... Oh, it's the Enforcers. I've already drawn Scarecrows. The Enforcers are all off the board anyway. I'm not removing the cards from the deck, even though there aren't any people out here, because you never know if something might trigger something. I don't think it will, but you never know. Livewire does, of course, get to activate at the end of this round. And I've done my best to be super sneaky tricky. We're going to see if this actually pays off. You can tell me how badly I do this in, <laughs> in the comments below. She is going to try to target the person with the lowest health. That, of course, is going to be Supergirl. She cannot move through my figures. She can't fire range attacks adjacent to me. So she's going to back up one square to try to fire. But now she's got all this smoke in her way. She cannot target through smoke. So the only person she could target is going to be Robin. She can't target Robin because she's adjacent. She can't shoot at Batman because it's one, two, three, too far. She can only move a total of four spaces. And breaking away from every person is going to add one movement. So she's only going to be able to move to there. And they only make one move action, villains and these leaders. They only make one move action each turn. So that's as far as she can go. She can't make any attacks. So things are looking up for us. I do have one problem. When she moved this way, the obscuring fog here that I have, the obscuring terrain, it's not going to affect her ability to break away, which is why this probably shouldn't be placed here. We'll have to think of a different place to place it. So in order for, in order for me to keep myself from being, preventing her from moving, I have to put this smoke somewhere else. Because if she's on the smoke, she's going to be able to walk away, which isn't going to help. So she has to move right there for one space if I don't put the fog on her. And that means I can't put the fog on anybody else. But if I put the fog on her here, that might actually help us out. I do have one more fog token I need to place, or the smoke tokens. It's kind of tough, but if I put it here, then she could still move away, and I wouldn't it would be two spaces she could move now, which might not be the end of the world because now there's smoke obscuring her ability to target any of my character over here, but she could still target here. Lots of talking here because this is a really weird situation. I'm just going to move her here 
and have her attack Supergirl because that's her target of choice is the person with the least amount of health. So she's going to attack Supergirl, which is in the fog. So I'm, she's only going to be able to attack with half of her attack, which is five. So again, we've come to another conundrum. I'm not sure if you round up or down. It's probably in the rules I might have missed it or it might be in an FAQ. I'm going to round it up just to make sure that it's a little bit tougher. And she's going to be attacked for three damage and I have to try to block it. I hope all that made sense. But when she was here in this fog, she could just move away without any problem because I'm not able to keep her where I want her to be. All right, let's see how this goes. We're gonna roll our seven defense here and see how it goes. I get to roll them up. I did block three. She does get one more attack against me. Let's see if I'm able to block it or does Supergirl go down? And Supergirl goes down in a blaze of glory. Supergirl has taken 15 health. Maybe I was a little bit too, <laughs> maybe I went in there too fast with her, but you know what? Eh, you know, I, I guess I've been watching the CW too much. I thought she'd be able to take all that damage without any problem because well, after all, she's Supergirl. We will KO Supergirl right here. We'll knock her down, and she's going to have to try to get up slowly but surely. Now that our characters are getting pummeled to death, we still have to remove these tick tokens, and I really only have three more turns before that bomb blows up. We'll roll all our action dice here and hopefully get some defense for the Supergirl. We did not. We got <laughs> not very good rolls for her, and we didn't. Oh, we got some good rolls for Zantana, though. And Batman's going to hopefully be able to heal. And look at all that defense. That's ridiculous. Now, I could have set something for Batman, but I don't think that, again, there was anything I really wanted to set. Robin's got a lot of range attack. That's pretty good. So let's see here. I could use focus tokens to reroll any of these I wish to. Batman has some. I wonder if it's worth rerolling these defense tokens. Hmm. I'm not actually next to anything that's going to attack me, so I am going to roll, use a focus token to reroll these two dice. Let's see what we get. That's hilarious. <laughs> got pretty much the same thing. He's down to one focus token. Batman has his symbol, so he does get to roll a die to potentially heal himself. Let's see how that goes. Nope, he can't heal himself. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I'm going to give a punch. I could give like a double something to somebody. I could give a double punch to somebody if I want to. Huh, that's a tough one. Robin likes double punches, but he also has a lot of range attack. I'm going to give the double punch to Zantana. That's my plan. I'm going to give the defend to me, and I'll give a defend and punch, I guess, to... Robin, because he's going to actually be attacked by that enforcer, if I or the crusher, I mean, if I don't actually help him. And the range attack is going to go after Zantana, though, which is going to be live wire. Oh, you got a lot of things here going on. Everybody's getting attacked. Absolutely out of control. Um, yeah, that'll be good. I'm going to give these tokens out to the people that get them. Robin gets a boot. He's going to give that to Batman. He's going to give the double range attack to, I guess, Supergirl, who can't use it, and to himself. Why not? And we'll put down the tokens that we got from Batman which is a punch and a block. Supergirl does have a bat symbol. I do have to give an extra one of these to Robin because he can then give that to Batman. He gets to do that because of his power. So Batman's going to gain an extra move up there. So he's not only he gets two different boot symbols from Robin, which is kind of cool. That'll help him move around the board a little bit because we got to get to that, what do you call it, that big giant blimp. We're going to roll our die here to see if we can help Supergirl. Supergirl gets to heal too. That's fantastic. We're going to do that. I also get a focus token back. Batman should have also got a focus token. I forget to give people those focus tokens, which is fantastic. And now I get to place these out here. I get to turn this to whatever I want. I'm going to turn it to a defend and punch, and I'm going to keep it because, remember, we have to roll to see if she can get herself up. I'm going to get a double move off. There's going to be a lot of moving this turn. We're going to give this over to Robin, and <laughs> Santana also gets a double move. Wow, that was actually a pretty bad roll for her, but that's okay. We'll move up to Zantana and see what I can do with all the dice she has. Of course, now Zantana rolls all those. She can't heal, but she does get to gain back two of her focus tokens. And let's see here. Does she get she gets double punch from Batman, which is going to help quite a bit. And I think I'm going to turn these to punches too, maybe. Hmm. Well, I do have a movement. Nobody really needs that. Batman's got a ton of movement. Everybody's got a ton of movement. I'm going to put the movement right there. That's out of control. And we have to set these two dice. I'm going to set them both to punch. Maybe we can maybe take out that crusher. That guy's out of control. I'm going to give this token to Batman. And I'll give another punch token to Supergirl, but she won't be using it because I highly doubt she'll be getting up because her get up value is 10. I don't know how we're ever going to get that in one shot here, but we'll see how it goes. We'll grab all our cards and hopefully Livewire does not go first this time. That's, she's gone twice first. 
That's ridiculous. I need like Scarecrow to go first because he's not going to do anything to us. We'll put our cards down here and draw our first card. And we've got the Crusher. If we don't take him out, he's going to go first. I should mean he gets to go again at the end of the round, not first. He gets to go first anyway. I get to roll four defense dice. He does a total of four damage to me. Let's see how it goes. I was able to block two. I could use a focus token that I don't have to prevent two of that damage, but that's not going to happen. I'm going to take two damage. That's awesome. Then he's going to attack again and see how we do this time. I was able to block three. I'm going to take one. We're going to only take three damage. Now, the problem is the Crusher has a power here that says if the Crusher's melee strike deals at least two wounds, the defending figure receives a stun token. Here is our stun token. In order to get rid of that stun token, we have to spend an icon that's not a defense. The crusher is done. We'll move on to the next person, which is going to be the enforcer. Not going to happen. Then we have the hired gun. Not going to happen. Then we have Robin. Oh, that'll be really good. Hopefully Robin can do some good. Robin is going to spend this boot action to be able to get rid of his stun token. At this point now, he's going to spend this double move to move away from all these people so he can actually use his four ranged attack. So in all my absolute glory, I have put her into smoke, which is terrible because I can't actually range attack her. He, she, he's going to move one, two to right here. Now he has to add three. So that's a total of five movement points he had to spend. He counts as two. She counts. Oh, she doesn't count as anything because, of course, she's in that fog. So it's one, two, one, two, three, four. And he's got a total of four. So I could keep moving if I wanted to, but I don't really want to. I want to be able to hit this guy. So we're going to go ahead and make a range attack. Now this is one, two, three spaces away. So I have to subtract one from the amount of dice I roll. For every space, I go past two. So I only get to roll a total of four dice against this. The Enforcer has three defense, so this is going to go absolutely swimmingly, I'm sure. Yep, I got a three, so I didn't actually do any damage to him. Wow, this Enforcer is just going to stand there and be the bane of my existence. The next thing we're going to do is be a little bit smarter. I'm not going to use the double. I only had to use the one because of the, I only had to move a total of four spaces. We're going to use this punch icon here to do boot to the head. It says Robin leaps up to three spaces in a straight line and may then make a melee strike. Plus one battle die for each extra non-defense icon spent. I'm going to spend these two icons. So I'm going to do a total of one, two, three, plus I get to leap three. We're going to leap right back to where I was and try again to punch this enforcer. Again, I don't foresee this going very well at all. But we'll say, oh, I got a total of four. That's going to actually do one damage. Fantastic. I'll take one on him. He's got only, what, seven left? Barf. All right, let's go to the next person. We'll draw our card and see who it is. It's Supergirl next. She gets to roll to see if she gets up. Supergirl gets four dice for her base defense, one for her dice that she has, and I get two for every person adjacent to me. Now, I am missing one die, so we'll roll an extra die when we are done here. Let's roll these up. We need to heal ten hit points worth of damage. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, and I get to roll another one and see we get seven. And let's see if that's going to be enough. Otherwise, I could use my focus token to re-roll those. Here's her damage. Let's start taking it away. So three, three, and one. That leaves us at six, which is not enough. We need to get her to five. So we are going to use our focus token to re-roll these two dice and hopefully get her up. We're able to heal three more, which is awesome. She's only at three damage, which means she is above her 10 for her awakening attribute to activate. So we left her with her three damage, but we got rid of three, six, nine, ten. She has three. That's awesome. Let's see what she can do with all of these icons here. Probably not much because I wasn't building her to actually do anything this turn. She can move an absolutely monstrous amount of spaces if she wishes to. Now, one thing I could do is, in addition, if Supergirl has, oh, sorry, Supergirl may make a special action to swap one of her skill cards for a card not currently active in battle. I could get rid of her, like, for example, I could switch out for Invulnerability or even Cold Breath, which might not be a bad idea. I could switch that out and use it. Supergirl's next rain strike doesn't weaken for the first three spaces and entangles two for every double that she rolls. This might not be a bad thing because I haven't been using this Heat one very much. Huh, it's, there's a lot of cool things. Oh, I might even switch out to X-ray vision. I think that's what we're going to do. I'm going to spend one of my double moves to switch this out. I don't think I need that heat vision anymore. I want X-ray vision. What X-ray vision does is it says right here, during cooperative mode, when drawing an initiative card, reveal the top three cards, play one, then return one card to the top and the deck and place the other card on the bottom. That could definitely help me. I don't know why I've been using that from the beginning. Her flight is awesome. I also think about using her invulnerability because it's really good. Supergirl is not affected by harmful terrain and may not be under fire and receives plus one defend. That might be something I do later on when we get closer to that blimp. 
But for now, we've used that to switch out that. Then I've got three punch. I can't even do anything with the punch. But I could use this two range attack. Why not? I'll fire a two range attack at the crusher. But before we do, I am going to use my other double move that I have to fly. And I'm going to fly one, two, three over to here. Or is that even a good spot? Oh, no, I got a better idea. One, two, three, four, up to there. Then I can fire at both of these people at some point. But we're going to attack the crusher right now with my two ranged attack. But I also have two melee attack. How am I going to deal with that? Eh, you know, sometimes you just don't get to use all your dice. Let's just fly up there and fire. I get to roll four dice. Remember, my doubles don't mean anything. And these definitely don't mean anything either. I did nothing to them. Good news, Supergirl's up. Let's see who's next. It's going to be Zantana. Sweet. The first thing we have to do is remove those two smoke tokens, which really didn't do me a lot of good. But we do get to place them down at the beginning, or during our turn at this point as well. But we don't have to do it right at the beginning. I have a movement and a lot of punch. Let's see if there's something I can do. I could do the old switcheroo if I want to. I'm going to do that. We're going to pay one of our focus tokens to use the old switcheroo. That's going to be able to allow me to choose a figure within two spaces of Xantana and in her line of sight. Xantana swaps space with that figure. The skill can be used more than once, paying its cost each time. That's going to be the card we're going to play. I'm going to old switcheroo with this guy. We're going to put the crusher back here. If we can maybe start outrunning that guy, I can focus more on getting over to this blimp than having to deal with these monsters. You don't have to kill everything. We just got to get over and I just can't get through them because there's no place to move. At this point, I am going to use my three punch to attack live wire here and get rid of those charge tokens. I get to roll four dice. Let's see how this goes. I got a total of four and Livewire only has a three damage. So I am going to do one damage and I'm going to turn one of her charge tokens down. So she's only doing four damage now, which is a lot better than five. And I'll place one damage down on top of her card. Xantana still has a double move and she's just going to use her movement to move right there. That's the end of her turn. Let's see who's going to go next. Hopefully it's nobody that's going to be bad. It's live wire. Yep, it's somebody that's bad. Oh, I forgot to place my smoke tokens down. We got to put those down first. I get to place down two smoke tokens. I'm going to put one on Supergirl and one on Robin. I've got a plan. Hopefully it works. We'll see how this goes. Of course, we're now going to activate live wire and we're going to see according to the priorities what she's going to do. Is there a preferred target within optimal strike range? Her preferred target is this one right here. It has eight health. No. Is there another target within optimal strike range? Yes, there is. Supergirl is within optimal strike range within three spaces. So she could go ahead and attack there. So she's going to make an attack with only two damage because I've put her in smoke. Oh, she's been using smoke all along. So good. Kara gets to roll five dice. Let's see how this goes. I blocked two, so that didn't. she didn't hit me. Let's try again. And she hit me for one damage, which isn't too bad. I'm at four health, which I guess is okay. It's better than being dead. There's not many people left. Batman and I think Scarecrow. Scarecrow's doing nothing. Batman's next. Let's see what he can do. We've got to try to get to this blimp. I'd love to start moving towards that blimp, but he only has punch as his like actual things he can use. He's got two movement though. So we're going to use our two movement, one, two, three, four to right here. And then we're going to punch live wire. We get to roll six dice against her. Let's see how this goes. That was phenomenal. Look at this roll. So she's going to block three. So we'll take the three away. And then I did a total of two, four, five damage to her. Wow, what a hit. Oh, only Batman can crack somebody like that. That was amazing. So she's taken a total of six damage already. The end of the round means then we need to activate this crusher. The crusher does a total of four damage, but I'm in here, so I'm only going to be hitting, getting hit for two. I just have to roll my defense. Robin gets four defense. Let's see how it goes. He didn't block anything. Okay, he takes two damage, and of course he gets another stun token. We'll place that down. He's up to five damage right now. We'll roll his defense again. Hopefully block something. He blocked two because this counts as a block, so he didn't get hit the second time. It's time to get a lot of move on our dice because we're at turn four. We only have two ticks left, and I don't know what any of those are. Batman is going to set one of his dice to movement, and I'm going to roll all the rest of them and hopefully get some good rolls here. We got defense and a bat signal, but we got, look at this movement here. That's really good. And range, we've got some, well, he's got one movement, some movement, a bat signal. Okay, I think this will be okay. Let's see how this goes. 
Robin's going to start first. He's going to roll a die, see what he gets to heal himself. He was able to heal one, and he gains a focus token. At this point, I am going to put my boot symbol, I think, over here. I'm going to flip this to a boot symbol as well, giving both Batman and Kara a boot symbol. I'm going to, I think, give the extra boot to Kara. So she's going to get two boots. And he's going to keep he's going to get an extra boot symbol here as well for this die. He's going to keep the double range, that's totally fine. I'm not actually thinking I'm attacking, I'm just trying to get to that blimp this turn. Batman keeps the boot in the middle because he chose that. He's going to grab a double range attack and he's going to grab a defense. So he's going to give a double to Robin and he's going to give that defense symbol over to Zantana right over there. And place it down on that board. And Robin will be giving a boot symbol to Batman. Zantana got boot symbols galore. She's going to give a boot defense and a boot to these people. So that means I'm going to give a boot symbol to Batman and a boot defend down over here to Kara. The last die I have is this ranged one. I'll stick it there. The last person is Kara. She gets to roll a die. She was able to heal one, which is awesome. I'm going to set this to a double boot, which is going to be sweetness. I think I'll give that to Robin. Robin's going to give a double boot. I'm going to give a punch and a block and a punch and a block right there. That's not a big bad idea here. I do get a focus token and I think that's going to be about it. So let's pass out our symbols. Double boot on Robin and the punch and block up on Zantana. At this point, as far as I'm concerned, we've gotten what we needed to off of the building. Now we just have to get to that blimp. We're going to leave probably these two people alive because otherwise it would take too much time to try to take them out. With all those boots, we're running. Let's see what we got first. Oh my gosh, that is perfect. Supergirl has a ton of movement. She's going to spend her double move and one of her move tokens, meaning she's able to gain a total of 12 movement. And she's going to use her flight ability here, allowing her to move through friend, uh, sorry, receives move plus one against flight. I'm also going to be able to move through friendly figures and place one of them adjacent to her after the move action ends if I spend a focus token. I have a focus token. I'm going to spend that. Supergirl is going to move one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven over to here. At this point, she's going to drop Batman right there. Now, I know I gave all these people move tokens, and then I realized that I'm probably only going to be moving two people a lot, and the other ones should have probably been punching and stuff, but that's okay. We're going to be just fine with that. She has used all those tokens. She does have three punch now that she can use, and she's going to target this gun guy right here. We're going to see if we can take him out, even though I don't think he's going to be able to shoot too much because, well, <laughs> we're all going to be adjacent to him. But I'm going to take a shot and punch at him and see what happens. I get to roll six dice. Let's see how it goes. I Wow, two. <laughs> he's going to block all that. I'm not going to do any damage to him. I do have one more movement token, but I think we're going to save it and see what we can do with it. With Supergirl finishing, we are going to use her X-ray vision card now. So I'm able to draw the top three cards, look at them, and put one back on top, one back on the bottom, and we get to then put one back on top, and we're going to play that one. This is going to be perfect. Robin also has a ton of boots. He's got a total of four of them. He's going to use three to give himself 12 speed, and he's going to use his gadget here. He's got one of those grappling guns. He's going to use the grapple gun. I'm allowed to ignore any figure in non-blocking terrain for your next move action this turn. You cannot end the action in the space. If you move through any friendly figures, you may place one of them adjacent to you after your move action ends. So I'm going to ignore figures and non-blocking terrain, which means I'll be ignoring these pits. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We're going to drop Robin next to Batman, and we're going to drop Zantana over here. That's going to be the first part of his action. We've totally left these people in the dust, which was my plan all along. He does have two range attack now that he can use if he wishes to. From where I am here, I cannot make any range attacks. We're all on this blimp, probably going to be punching each other pretty soon. I can only make attacks through friendly figures with ranged line of sight. I can't target like this guy because it'll go through his square. So Robin's really going to be done. That's about all he's got, which is kind of sad. 
but I need to start getting punch icons. I got a lot of range icons. I didn't really do a very good job of setting up my dice this time, but we've got out of the blimp. That's half the battle. Now I do have some gadgets I can play. You can play as many gadgets you want and one card per turn. We're going to use this one. Perform a special action without spending action dice. If the special action is to investigate a bomb, you may inspect one additional wire. I am going to do that. I'm going to use this goggles to inspect a wire. And since I have those two ranged icons, we're going to use those as well to look at the bomb. So we're going to use those ranged attacks to investigate this bomb. And I get to investigate an extra one. So we're going to look at this one and this one. So we know those two are bad news city. So we're going to return those back like that. And now I have to do the important part of remembering not to grab those. Robin has completed his activation. We are going to see who is next. It's going to be enforcers. We don't have any enforcers out there. We are going to then use Zantana. Zantana is next. Sweet. Let's see what she can do. Zantana is going to use a couple of her actions, her ranged attack action, and one of her movement actions to help out some of these bystanders. And doing so, we'll remove these from the map. We have saved these two bystanders. That's awesome. I have a few other things I can do, but it's going to be a lot. I don't really much else I can do. I could. I have a boot symbol and a punch symbol with defense. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the old switcheroo again because that's that's pretty awesome. I'm going to use my focus token to switch places with somebody. We're going to switch places with the Scarecrow. He can go over here. There we go. Scarecrow, you go right there. That's fantastic. That's going to be, I think, all I'm going to do is Xantana. She's done. She has nothing else she can do. She has only defense tokens left, really. And I cannot use those in any way to deal with this bomb, which is too bad. Now, I do get to put down smoke because I get to put that down, and I've been forgetting that other time, so I'm not going to forget again. I'm going to put one on my square, and I'm going to put one on Batman's square just because I'm feeling those people might be the target of attacks. We'll draw our next card and see who it is. It's going to be our hired guns. They're going to go next. This hired gun really can't fire at anybody because moving here, I'm going to block line of sight here, and there's nothing he can really do at that point. I guess he could go, and he's going to take this hostage. He's going to take that hostage hostage. <laughs> Does that even make sense? He's going to move, though, and it's going to cost him a couple to move out of the way of that person, but he still gets to move one. This allows him to make a ranged attack at the person with the highest amount of health. She's got eight, and Robin here has, I think, eight as well. So I'm going to have him attack Zantana. Zantana gets to roll up six dice against us, and she blocked his attack just fine. We'll move into the next person's turn, and it's going to be the Crusher. The Crusher will target the person with the most health, which is going to be Supergirl. Supergirl gets to roll six defense dice against his four attack. Let's see how it goes. I was able to block two, meaning I am going to take two damage, and I'm going to take a stun token, which I forgot to take off of Robin. Robin did have a lot of extra tokens we didn't really use. He used some extra movement tokens and such, so we would be able to get rid of the stun without any problem. That's his first attack. He does get two attacks against her because he is adjacent and not actually moving. Let's see what he does for his second attack. I was able to stop two of them again, so I'm going to take two more damage and I'm going to take another stun token. So we took a total of four, which wasn't that great, but that's okay. She is up to a total of three, six, nine damage again. With them done, let's see who's next. We are going to activate Scarecrow at last. Scarecrow here does have three movement, three attack, three defense, and 15 health. He is the master of fear. At the start and end of his turn, all adjacent enemy figures, including bystanders, receive the fear toxin token. The Scarecrow may make melee strikes against figures up to two spaces away. However, the melee strikes cannot be made through enemy figures, so it doesn't follow the normal targeting rules. Enemy figures consider Scarecrow to be an obstructing terrain when making making range strikes against him, and also if they are affected by his fear toxin, which is going to be awesome. All right, let's see who he's going to fire attack. He's going to attack the person with the least amount of health, and he does have somebody like that, and that is going to be Robin. Robin only has three defense he can roll against the Scarecrow's attack, and he's going to get hit for two, bringing his damage total to six. At this point, he is now going to enter his uh, defense mode. So I'm going to flip all of his dice to the defense side. So we're going to add one, two, three dice to this, so I'm going to get an extra six. Now remember, the Scarecrow is to make three actions, so he's going to attack again, for, and I was able to block that one. He's going to roll one more time, and he had, I get to count these as blocks, so I missed all of the other... He missed me all of the other times, which is awesome. It is the end of his turn, so all enemy figures adjacent to him are going to receive fear toxin tokens here. So that's going to be Robin, and it's going to be Zantana, which I hope doesn't affect us too much. It's going to make it harder to hit him, I believe, but I think we're going to be okay. 
We'll see who's next. It's going to be Batman because I know the bottom one is going to be Livewire. I did forget to activate this Crusher, but I don't think he's really going to matter because he can't get to us now that we're on the blimp. Batman has a defense symbol, which he can't use, but he's got a lot of other symbols. He's got three movement symbols. I think he's going to use a special action, and he's going to, again, use his secret go search goggles here that he has to be able to activate this bomb and see which one is the right one to cut. We're going to use one of our movement symbols to do that. So we've already looked at those two. Let's look at this one, and let's look at this one. Okay, this is the right one to use in order to get rid of the bomb. At this point, I'm going to use my double bat orang ability here to defuse the bomb. I'm going to choose that one. Our bomb is now defused. We still have to rescue the hostages. I'm going to use one movement to give myself a total of three. It's going to cost me one, two to move out of this away from that guy. And then for my other boot symbol, I'm going to use the special action to save this bystander. Live wire is going to be activating last. So move one, two, three, and that is it. Now, if we go back to our cards, the person that activated first for the bad guys would have been the hired guns, and the hired gun will make a shot at Zantana. I get to roll six defense dice against this. I was able to block it. I'll roll the other one as well, and I was able to block that one. Now, he did make two ranged attacks against me, so that means I am going to be under fire from that hired gun. So we'll place this token here, and then we'll put that one right there. At this point, I'm going to roll up all of our dice. We've got a lot of... Oh my gosh, look at Kara's dice. That's amazing. She's going to heal a ton of health and everything. At this point, the only thing I have left to do is rescue the bystander. So we have to beat up that guard and hopefully get, her, get the bystander saved. Robin is going to give everybody these attacks and his boots. Batman is going to give people boots and he'll keep a ranged attack. Zantana is going to give Kara a, this is a boot, and a punch token. I get to get a focus token back, but the problem is I already have a, uh, I, there's our focus token, but I already have full health with her right now. But we give the punch to Kara. Finally, Kara's going to grab double punch on every one of those dice. She gets to roll up three of these. She heals two, four, five damage. That's amazing. I'll just keep that one flipped over to one. And she gets two focus. She can't go over her focus limit, from what I understand. So she's only going to gain up to two. She is going to gain that punch, though, from Zantana. And she's going to give a double punch to Zantana. And we're going to give a double punch to <laughs> Robin. Robin's going to be punching, and Zantana's going to be punching. It's going to be great. We'll grab our initiative cards here, give them a good old truffle shuffle, and see what's going to happen. I'm going to use Kara's ability first, her x-ray vision. We're going to grab the top three and see what we got. We got Supergirl. I'm going to put, I'm going to play that one, put this one on the bottom, and put Robin right there. I think this will be just fine. Supergirl is going to totally take out that hired gun. This hired gun's not even going to know what hit him. I'm going to hit him with two, four, six, seven of these uh, dice plus her extra four, three. So I get to roll ten dice against this guy. But first, I have to get rid of my two stun tokens. I forgot about those. I'm going to get rid of them using... So I'm going to use this one and this one to get rid of my stun tokens. Then I get to use these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to attack him. Supergirl gets to roll six dice. Let's see how we do. I got a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, which is going to be enough except for one problem. He does have that hostage. That gives him plus two defense. So right now he has blocked four of my defense, meaning I have to use my focus token in order to reroll these dice and hopefully take him out. I was able to get the other two, so he blocked four because he gets the extra bonus from the hostage token here. But doing four, he only has three health. That'll be enough to take him out. We'll remove that hired gun from the board. I'll use my double range attack as my special action to be able to save this hostage. And we've done it. We have completed the scenario. We didn't have to worry about being under fire or anything. This was pretty awesome. I had to run all the way over here and take on this blimp. It was pretty cool. So there you have it. That was Batman the Animated Series, the board game by IDW Games. We did one of the little extra episodes out of Arkham Asylum here. There's a lot of neat episodes that you can play through. I really like the dice mechanics in this game, being able to share those dice and play with all the different characters in the Batman universe. It's really cool to be able to play with more players. Playing solo is okay, but I like a lot of other players. There's a lot of cooperation and a lot of talking to figure out what you're going to do and how you're going to do it. 
Now, when it comes down to the actual gameplay, I find it very fun. The only problem is there's a lot of little fiddly rules in this thing that make this game, as being just, a, to me, like a dice-chucking type game, I wish it would have been a little bit easier rule set to follow. There are probably some mistakes I made throughout this playthrough, and I apologize. Please, of course, let me know in the comments below what those are. So I'll put them in a pinned comment so people can learn from the game, this actual playthrough itself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough of Batman the Animated Series. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the next game comes out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. Now, this is going to be the end of my series for Batman the Animated Series because, well, this is Colin's copy and I'm going to be handing it back to him. Who knows? Maybe down the line I might try again and see how we do on one of the actual scenarios from the actual episode once people have had a chance to play through a lot of this and I wouldn't be spoiling any of the actual episodes in these. Again, I hope you enjoyed it. Man, Supergirl is awesome. I really like the characters. Antana is great. I'm really upset with myself for missing those smoke tokens for quite a while, but that's okay. I had a blast playing this. I hope you enjoyed it as well. And if you did, thank you again for watching. And if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop.